Scarlett Hanna was born into Scientology's elite. Her mother, Vicki Dunstan, is the president of the church in Australia. Her father, Mark Hanna, is a former director of public affairs. As members of the Sea Org, Scientology's elite unit, they sign billion-year contracts dedicating themselves to the cause. But according to Scarlett Hanna, this kind of dedication came at a cost to the children of the Sea Org, who grew up in what was known as the Cadet Org. The best way I can describe it is cattle. Um, we were property of the organisation. Um, although they would like to say that we weren't, we were. Children of Sea Org members rarely had contact with their parents. Scarlett Hanna says they lived in separate homes and were granted only 20 minutes each night with their parents. I can't describe it. It was just an incredibly lonely childhood. Um, I had no one to talk to or to look after me or to ask me how I was after school or you know, any of those things that most of us take for granted. The Cadet Org was eventually disbanded around eight years ago, after Sea Org members were banned from having children. Until then, Cadet Org members lived in townhouses like this one. It's probably one of the most overcrowded buildings that we lived in. There's probably up to about 25 kids. And Being looked after by one nanny? One nanny, that's right. What about children? Do you ever see them? Oh, that's right. L. Ron Hubbard didn't believe parents were good for children. What a Sheila Huber is a former executive establishment officer at the Church of Scientology in Los Angeles. At the age of 16, she signed up to the Sea Org. One of her first jobs was as a nanny. I couldn't believe it. It was wall-to-wall -wall cribs. There were just under 30 children, and they were under my sole care. I had no training. I had never really spent much time babysitting young ones like that, and they were all under the age of three years old. Sheila Huber says around 30 infants were crammed into a one-bedroom apartment. They never got outside. Actually, they got out once. In eight months, they got out once. And that, was, that took three months to get that approved. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's, it's hard. Um, we took them in a van, the children, and took them to the park. And uh, they spent so much time in their cribs day after day, night after night, that they wouldn't go in any space larger than the size of their cribs. They were terrified. They were terrified of sunlight. Scarlett Hanna says children growing up in the Cadet Org in Australia did not receive adequate food or medical care. She says community services visited on two occasions but were deceived by the church. The furniture was dismantled by um, a division within the sea organisation that deals with, um, with labour. And the kids were sent out for the day um, to as a peer that you know, they were living to, according to crowding laws. Sarah McClintock, a member of the Church of Scientology, rejects every single allegation made by Scarlett Hanna. What I experienced with Scarlett is she was a very good friend of mine. I grew up with her. And what she is saying, I did not experience. So I don't know where she's coming from with such things. It really doesn't make any sense to me because I grew up with her. I was there with her. And I think people are giving her things to say personally. For Scarlett Hanna, the worst part of her time in the cadet org was the enforced separation from her parents. Her father, Mark Hanna, was twice sent to the US to the RPF. Scientology's rehabilitation program. According to Scarlett, her father's crime was failing to prevent a negative story about Scientology from appearing on TV. He was gone for several years, probably about two, two or three years. What impact did that have on you to lose your father like that for two to three years and not knowing when he would be back? Well, at the time I had, I was living in a separate house to my mother. Um, I wasn't seeing my mother at all at family time. She would wake me up at midnight and walk me down to her house so I could sleep with her. Um, I lost my father. I had no one to talk to. Um, it was very humiliating because the RPF was a place where the bad guys went. You know, if, 
if your father went to the RPF, he was seen as a criminal. Do you consider taking someone's parent away for a couple of years and putting them into a rehabilitation unit in another country to be a form of abuse? Well, I think, um, again, that's uh, their personal family matter. Is it a form of abuse to well, do that? I, I don't know what to say to that. I'm sorry. Because well, it's an, it's an organisation that you're speaking for here, yeah. and it's an organisation who has routinely done that mm. to parents and their children. Is it a form of abuse? Well, I don't actually agree that uh, it's been routinely done, and I think in that instance, in that family, you would have to speak to those, um, to the father and the mother, as to why they li lived like that, why they um, chose to take that action. But based on her experiences in the US, Sheila Huber says there's little choice involved. I get surrounded by eight grown men, grown Sea Org members, eight grown men in a circle around me telling me I'm now going to the RPF. I can really relate to Scarlett's story and this is something that to this day I still have nightmares about this. And we're talking, this. I was on the RPF in 1986. I still have nightmares because I felt I deserted my son. My son, who I had full legal custody of, was illegal take, illegally, illegally taken from me and given to my ex-husband because he was a Sea Org member in good standing. Sheila Huber was separated from her five-year-old son for a year. She was sent to the RPF for having sex with someone she wasn't married to. She was unmarried at the time. At the age of 13, Scarlett Hanna was kicked out of the Cadet Org and sent to live with adults from the Sea Org in this home in inner Sydney. Basically, I was living unsupervised from, you know, 9 in the morning to 12 at night to midnight. Um, I was, at the time, I was going to a very rough school, um, probably one of the roughest schools in Sydney. I was being bullied and bashed and so I just stopped attending school. Um, my, my parents didn't know a thing about it at the time. I started hanging out in parks because I was so socially isolated and this led me to being raped by a convicted murderer and running away. Despite her experiences, Scarlett doesn't blame her parents. I think they're part of the organisation, they were part of the machine. I think the church had some very toxic um, ways of managing its staff and their children and I definitely blame the church as an organisation, not my parents at all. Scarlett Hannah has been under immense pressure not to tell her story. Her father has even threatened to sue her. Scarlett Hanna decided to speak out after seeing the Four Corners program on Scientology. I just think that the church needs to take some accountability for, you know, what it was involved in. Um, maybe apologise to some of these people that have had, you know, such traumatising experiences. Scarlett Hanna's parents declined to be interviewed for this story. Steve Kinane, Late Line.